This is for them boys down in Texas that be handling their biz. Get it how you live. Shout out, you know what it is. Boys down in Texas. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel to another video. Today, we're gonna be doing some Liberty Gears. We're gonna be working on Tony's transmission. Uh, he already has a Liberty Impa shaft with first and second synchro. And now we're gonna do third and four dog box. So, I already made a video of how to do it um, or how to rebuild stock transmission, but we're gonna do one uh, with the dog box gears. Um, and also I'm gonna be changing all the synchros to a P-Work synchros on this one. Uh, Tony bought all the synchros new. Obviously third and four, we're not gonna be using synchros, it's gonna be dog box. And then, yeah, put it back together and, and show you the whole deal. So, yeah, let's get to it. Oh, first, let me show you. Spent some time last weekend organizing everything here. Bunch of extra parts. Wow. Transmissions. So, a lot of fucking work. Anyways, so here's uh, Tony transmission. Like I say, he already has the Liberty Impa shaft. So we're gonna have, we're gonna be taking that apart and then we're gonna be using third and fourth. And also he bought a um, billet um, fork for uh, third and fourth also. I did contact Liberty and they say you can use the OEM one. It's just the OEM one is weak. Uh, of course, this one is better. So I'm gonna be doing my brothers also the same way as this one. It's kind of like a hybrid transmission, synchro, first and second and fit and reverse and dog box third and fourth. So they say, yeah, you can use it, but you have a big chance of snapping that one. So hopefully Hugo will hold for a while. Uh, Tony just went ahead and buy the, the badass fork. So let me start setting everything up and uh, start showing you how to take it apart. You're gonna use a 13 ratchet wrench uh, for the bolt that is under this arm after you take all the other ones. Just lift it up a little bit and put it on. That's it. And while you're taking it off, the bolt is gonna be lifting the, the plate automatically too. Just put it right here. Now let's take all the all 13s. Now don't forget your 15 that is under the transmission for the uh, reverse eyelet. So slide down here. And after that, you can take it apart. Are you gonna use anything you have to pry this open? It's got a little cut to the back of the transmission. Just hit it a little bit like that. And then get a screwdriver. There you go. Now we can go ahead and remove the whole gear set. Just like that. Woo. All right, guys, remember for this bolt, it's not a regular 40 Torx. It's actually a TP40BS Torx, which means is that the, the teats on this one are a lot thicker and it won't strip the bolts. So make sure you get one of these. And then obviously, since this one has a lot of pain, you always want to put it on and then hit it with a hammer to make sure it's all the way in. Then you can take it off. Now, you don't need an impact for this, but it makes it a lot easier. Now that we 
don't have the plate off, you have two snap rings on the back. You can get these pliers um, at O'Reilly's for like 20 bucks or something like that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it on the bottom, maybe with the screwdriver, it's a little easy. And then you hit it with the pliers and pull the ring out. Let me get the screwdriver. Put the screwdriver down here, squeeze, and just gonna pull it out. Of course, gonna do in the ass because I'm doing the video. Also, what you can do is move the shaft back. Boom, like that. You get way more room. See that? I'm gonna push it back. So it makes it easier for you to get the pliers and grab better and everything. So after that, let's pull it out like that. And be careful. Because that happens. All right, same thing with the other one. Let's push it back. Move it. And do this. And you can get it halfway out, and then you can just kind of walk it slowly with the screwdriver so you don't damage it, and that's it. Now, since so we're gonna pretty much rebuild the whole transmission, and the shafts are like secure here, I will go ahead and take this um, snap rings also. These little ones right in the middle. Cause we're gonna be taking those bearings out. So, these ones are a lot harder, but same concept as the other ones. Just gonna hold it. I need new pliers, these pliers are all beat up. Let me try this way. Nope. Maybe this way. There you go. You need to get some good pliers because these things are pain over here. Boom. There you go. That's a two. So now we can go ahead and flip the transmission and pull everything out. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me just clean this. Like that. Okay, push it down. And then we flip this over. You're gonna remove your reverse idle it. So you just pull this one out, comes out, pull the gear out, and you have a washer on the bottom. Don't lose that. This one over here. Okay. So now we can go ahead and try to remove the case. So I'm gonna walk it. If not, what you can do is lay down again with the gears facing down like this. And we're just gonna hit the case out. Don't hit it too hard unless you have a mallet. go now we just hold it and that's it so can I move the forks We're gonna be replacing this one, which is a third gear one. So, let's start with the input shaft, because it's a lot easier. We're gonna press this bearing out, and then we can take the nut and do the rest. Let me um, see if I can put the camera on the, on the press, because we're gonna have to use the press to get it out, and then uh, start sliding the new gears, the hub, and all that. So let me set it up, and. I'll show you. All right, let's go ahead. Make sure you hold the input shelf on the bottom. There you go. Now we're gonna go ahead and 
Take this nut off. Now on this one, you're gonna, you're gonna need a punch, something like this, with a little point, because you're gonna take those little lock marks that you did on the last or from factory to release those. You're gonna hit it. Just to open them up. Just like that. Now that all this is open and the uh, nut can turn, let's go ahead and get the special tool. All right, I found the tool. Now, somebody asked me about this tool the other day, and I actually went on eBay and found this tool for anybody that wants to look it up. It's uh, Miller. 8478 that's the part number so you go to ebay and you will find this anyways since i don't have the input shaft holder i just use my hammer and uh you know break it loose with that so after you release all the locks you just hit it until it comes loose and then you can take it off That nut has to be really, really tight because if it comes loose, you know, you can damage the gears, the synchros, all kinds of stuff. So whenever you put it on, it has to be tight. Oh, there you go. Now let's go back to the press. Now that we have the nut out, this is the next gear that is pressed. The fifth gear drive. And that gear is out. We can go ahead and disassemble the whole input shaft. Fourth gear. Don't forget your bearing. We have a snap ring over here that we're gonna have to remove also. So let's do that. Well, actually, you have the synchro. Take it out, put it over here. And Tony already had the upgraded um, snap ring from P-Works. So we're gonna be reusing this one. This is pretty much brand new. That's that. Then you're gonna take your synchro, slider and hub, and then your third gear. Like that. And then you have your bearing. And this bearing is cut in half so you can always open it and uh, remove it. Like so. All right, but we're gonna be reusing this. So we'll put this back like that. Now let me get all the Doppler stuff ready and then we get at it. All right guys, if you are replacing the bearings with some new ones, make sure you put a lot of oil on these things. This one's already like full of oil, so we're good on that. Also, if you're replacing your input shaft, don't forget to switch that ring right here at the bottom because it's gonna go into your third gear right here. So, bearing is full of oil. Here's the gear, so we're just gonna slide it in like that. That's, that's third gear. So now you have your slider and your hub, right, for the dock box. Now on my other videos, I will tell you to line up some lines over here with the hose, 
Since this one is a dog box, that doesn't matter anymore because you got no synchros. You have no uh, friction material, I guess, like this. Like this one that you have to worry about, right? This has got no synchro at all. So this one, um, you don't have to worry about lighting up the holes or anything like that. You just wanna put the hub and you can put it separate also. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one and um, it's the same either either side. So we're just gonna line up the three and four to the third gear and same with, same with the slider. So I'm gonna have put this. All right, so I got it in, right? This is the, the hub. It's really tight going in, so um, if it doesn't go in smooth, just get a little uh, mallet and just kind of tap it all the way around until it goes down and it will stop. So now it's all the way in. Let's go ahead and put the snap ring. This is your third gear, fourth gear snap ring, I guess. Um, and like I said, Tony already had the upgraded one, so we're just gonna reuse that. If you're doing this, I would recommend you to get this uh, snap ring because they break a lot. P work sell it, so go ahead and get it from P work. So boom, that's it. All right, so we got a third gear, we got a slider, and then now we're gonna have the dog box. As you can call it synchro. Then don't forget your bearing for fourth gear. Like that. Again, this one already has a lot of oil. And then your fourth gear. And that's it. And this is gonna be flooring around. There's nothing holding it, so. You know, that's how the dog box look. So now, I'm just gonna do the, whatever we did over there, pressing the, the gears and all that. I'm gonna reverse that. So like that, the video is not too long. So pretty much you're gonna put your regular fifth gear idle it, press in, the nut. You're gonna lock the nut. So, they say not to reuse the nut, but it's hard to get the parts now. So as long as you can lock it, it'll be fine. So you're just gonna have a, with the punch, you're gonna make a punch here into one of these lines so this get locked and don't move. And then you put your bearing and you're done for the input shaft. Then I'm gonna start showing you how to do the outer shaft, which is, I'm gonna rebuild all that too. And we also need to put this uh, on the outer shaft, which is gonna be for the dog box. So this is gonna be on the outer shaft and it's gonna go like this. and it's gonna drive third and fourth. So, yeah, let me start working on the outer shaft so I can show you that and the video's not too, too long and boring and shit. All right, let's do the reverse, I mean the outer shaft. So, we're gonna pry from this one out, which is your uh, reverse. So, this thing is really heavy. That. Now they do sell some tools that you don't need to press. Uh, I just don't have the link or the picture to show you. But um, yeah, you don't you don't need the the press. I used to I used to do it without it um, back in the day. Obviously, this makes it a lot easier. So if you can just get one from Harbor Freight or. If you're just gonna use it one time or two times, then maybe uh, try to get the other tool. I'll see if I can find a picture and post it on the on the video. Just like that. Oh, hey, we have got the bearing. You got this little washer spacer that goes in between these two. So this and the washer is the only one that I pressed. Pressed it into the shaft, everything else 
well, or reverse and fit. That's the only thing. Then of course, we're gonna take your bearing. And if you're gonna be reusing this, try to keep it on the same direction. You know, you don't wanna flip them around and then you can cause, you know, noises or, you know, not all the time. Sometimes we'll create some noise because they're already used to go on one side and not the other. So what I do is when I take them off, I take them off and then I just flip them. So I know I just put it back like that. So now, of course you got your synchro. And I think this is the synchro that I gave Tony last time when I built his transmission. But now he's got some new ones. And then you have another snap ring right there. We're gonna go ahead and take it off. And, um, and then we're gonna press out the uh, third and fourth uh, drive. So with your fingers, you hold it on the back and on the front, um, you just squeeze it with your pliers. This is the ring. And then everything comes out. Same thing, flip it so you know the direction. We're gonna be putting new ones. So we're gonna keep those over there. And it's your fit gear. And it's just stuck with some oil. Something like that. And then of course, your bearings. Same direction. Now, we have another snap ring right here. And this is also pressed in into the shaft. So let's go ahead and take that. And, uh, and then press it up. This one is really small, so it's hard to get it sometimes. But with the right pliers, no problem. Like that. Here's the other one. And you can't mix them. They're two different sizes, so you can't mix those. All right, now let's press that one up. Hopefully Henry will make something funny out of this video so y'all don't get bored. I got you, homie! This thing is tight tight. So let's squeeze this one. Yeah. There you go. Once you click one. All right, so now that we removed the, um, the idle lid over there, and we're gonna take your second gear. Same thing, you have your bearing. Go on like that. And you got your synchros. All right, so we're gonna be putting new ones, but you're gonna reuse this. So that goes like that. <clears throat> and you're also gonna reuse this, because First and second gear is like a double synchro. It's got a meat on the inside, meat on the outside. So you use this other two here. Then we have another snap ring over here that we're gonna take off, take it off. Same thing. And also it's different size, so you cannot put on the wrong spot. See, this one, this one and this one, they're all different sizes. So you can't you can miss them. Then you got your first and second synchro hub and the slider, same thing. You're gonna put it the same way. And then you have your other synchro first gear <clears throat> that we're not gonna be reusing. Now, we're not gonna remove first gear or the bearing because we're just gonna put the synchro back on. So when you replacing the blocker rings or synchros, you want to make sure that you have them, you know, on a bag or on a container and they're soaked on oil, same oil that you're gonna use on the cars, right? Tony's been using a Mobile One 10W40 and that's what I use on this bag, the high mileage one. And I, I let them soak, it's been soaked since I started the video. So. 
you want to make sure these things are soaked in oil. So whenever you put it on, you turn it on the first time, is that they're not dry. Because if not, you're gonna damage it like that right away. So I already have them on the back. We're gonna go ahead and take them off the back. Okay. We're gonna take our this is the P-Works carbon synchros. So we're gonna be just installing this on here. Now, first and second gear, they have these little sliders, little holes, and your synchro also has them. So you're just gonna line them up there, like that. And then this one is gonna line up with your synchro here, there and there. So you're gonna line that one up. And where's my other one? This one. Something like that. This one is kind of lined up on the outside one, right here. And the inside one is gonna line up with the inside one here. So you wanna put them kind of the same way, like that. So when you slide it in, it goes in. If not, you have to turn and turn and turn until you, until you uh, find it. Now, my friend Tony hates me because he also bought some stronger Synchro springs, and let me tell you, they're pain in the ass to fucking replace those. But anyways, we're gonna do it. So, I'm just gonna remember that my numbers go down so I can put it exactly the same way as, as I take it off. So, <clears throat> what we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove these two together. I'm gonna push them down like that. And, I was gonna say be careful with that because you got ball bearings on it. So I'm probably gonna have to get one of my synchros and get a ball bearing because that one is gone. Anyways, you wanna keep those ball bearings inside. Just like that and take the springs out. These little springs and we're gonna replace it with some uh, strong ones that Tony bought. All right, so I couldn't find the fucking thing. But I got another one for my spare ones. So anyways, this is the OEM spring. And this is the, the upgraded one. You can see the difference. A little longer, a little stronger. So, it's kinda. Oh, look at that. I just found the ball bearing. <laughs> Who's inside here? God damn, I knew it. It's been like 20 minutes working for it. Right there. Well, at least I found it. Some of that I know is not somewhere in the transmission. Anyway, this is the hard part. You're gonna have to put all the springs together, hold them while you release, while you um, release the, the, the slider into the hub. And that's what makes it really hard. So, let's try to hold them all together. With the ball bearings and everything. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> all right. So, so these springs are longer, it's really hard and annoying to put them on. Now you have <clears throat> a little spacer and then one in between, little teeth. That's where you're gonna put your, your little clips right here. Well, that's where you're gonna try. Hold on. Man, it's been a long time since I did some of these. Two. 
hold it, hold it. And one more. And that. All right. So you kind of, kind of push up while you're trying to slide it in. To line it up. My spring came off. They all came off. God damn it. Alright, let's try it again. One eternity later. Alright guys, once you have it lined up like that, you want to grab something to push the ball in, and then down. Same with this one. In, then down, and this one too. In, and then down. And just kind of release it, I mean, slide it really slow to the middle. And one came off. God damn it. So I have to redo this one because the spring came off. But you have the idea of how, how it goes. So let me try to fix that one only and then try it again. Yeah, so now I got all three. The springs are on it. The ball bearings are on it. So we're good to go. This will make the, the synchro feel a lot stiffer. You know, so you know you're in gear. Um, and it will prevent a lot of the popping out of the gear or, you know, not, you gotta feel it really good when it goes in. So that's it. So now we can put this one into here. So we say numbers down. Again, this one, you do gonna have to line up the cut with the holes in the input shaft because this also has a synchro. I mean, this one kept the synchro. So it's really important that you line them up. Just like the last video I did. Best way to follow is this hole in the top. So you want to be just a little bit over and you know that you are right in the hole. And then just move your synchro until it kind of clicks in. And then just keep moving it until the other one goes in and boom, that's it. All the way in. So now we can go ahead and put our clip which is the biggest one. Like that. And going in, it's a lot easier than going out. So, I wanna make sure they clip. Let's see if we hear it. Boom, there you go. So now you know that was good. Now, we wanna go ahead and put our second gear synchro. Again, I have it on the back, soaking on oil. That's a little bit more. And then, let's put this thing in. So you have your inner synchro or uh, ring, I guess. This one's gonna go inside here, like that. Second gear is a lot easier because you can line it up right here and all you have to do is line up the gear. So it makes it so much easier. Then you have the outside one. And man, I'm doing it all wrong. I'm gonna put it all together here first. So your synchro goes in the middle. This is the outside one, the synchro itself, and then the inside ring. Put them all together, put it on, and just line them up. You're gonna line up the outside teeth and on the inside, just like that. So I got this one lined up and the outside lined up. So now all you need to do is put your second gear, which is the uh, Liberty one, and your bearing. So you put your bearing in, then your second gear, and all you have to do is move it until it goes down. Boom, that's it, it went in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put this one. Like that, but that one has to be pressed in. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that one in, put the rest, and we're good to go. All right guys, so I already got this press, pressed in, the clip on here, of course your bearing, fit here right and I already went ahead and put the springs on this one so I'm gonna put my synchros or blocker ring full of oil and then again this one you got some cuts right here you have to line up with the hole so go ahead and do that again <clears throat> you can base on the top hole and then makes it a lot easier to line it up that and move it into a click. I want to double check. Like 
All right, and then our last snap ring for this. And we still have one more uh, for the for the bearing at the back. So let me do that. Click, and then we have. Remember, we put on like that. So, boom. We put our other synchro full of oil. We put some more oil on it. We want a lot of oil. We just put it on here. Like that. And then we're gonna slide our reverse, which I have it somewhere over here. Right here. So reverse. And that looks pretty good. Then we're gonna put this on and the bearing. Now you can press this one in, but I use uh, this socket, which is uh, one and one, uh, one and one quarter, and it fits right, right under the, right outside the input shaft, so you can just hit it. that and then the bearing is really important that you know how to do this because you have to hit it on the metal not on the black part not on the outside because you will damage the bearing you have to hit it on here which this socket is right on it so that's why I use the socket I don't even know if this thing's you see yeah you can see I don't know if the GoPro moved because the uh, hammer can hear when it's all bottomed out. So then, let me move this a little bit. We're gonna put our last snap ring for the bearing at the end. <laughs> Make sure when you take this off, you don't spread open too much, because this thing will, will flex too much and then it won't have enough pressure to hold the bearing in place. So at that point, you either have to replace them or put them on a box and close them again and then you know, it works. So now it's all complete. Synchros. Oh, just those springs makes it so, uh, you know, hard to press, but that's what they are for. Move this gear, make sure. Oh, there you go. So you can check them like that to make sure it goes, you know, in and out. So, now, uh, Tony also has the Liberty um, fork, which that's what I'm gonna do now. But let me show you how this thing looks. Uh, next to the input shell with the third and fourth gear. Man, look at that. Looks sick. Dog box, synchro, synchro. All right, let me get the fork ready to be replaced and after that we'll pretty much wrap it up. Um, because in my other video, I explained how to, you know, put on the transmission, what kind of um, sealer to use for this. You don't want to use silicone. Um, you don't want to use silicone in here. You can use silicone on the back, but not on here, and on here also. So I built this transmission a while back, and look, it's still fresh. So that's what you want. So like that, if it gets into the into the transmission, since it don't get hard, it will just dissolve and goes through it, no problem. Silicone will, will not dissolve. It will stay pretty thick, and it's gonna clog up the input shaft, the outer shaft, and all that, and then your bearing goes out. So let me show you how to do the last part. And then we'll wrap it up. All right, guys, so this is kind of like an early model uh, 04 transmission because it's got this connected to the same shaft. The newer 04 and 05s, they don't have this, it's different. They have another adapter. 
but the same concept for the third gear fork. So the only thing stopping this to come out is this little thing right here. So you have a clip or a pin right there. You're gonna punch that pin out, take this off, and then remove it and replace it. Just make sure you put this thing the same way, because if not, not, none of this is gonna line up. So you can see how this lined up, and of course, when you put the other one lined up over here. So I got my punch right here. I'm gonna punch it out, and then uh, put the new one in. Pin comes out. We're gonna keep this the same way. We're gonna slide this one out. We're gonna put it like that. Take the fourth gear, I mean third gear out, just like this. And let's get the new one, bam, Liberty one. So whoever or for anybody that's doing this um, third and fourth dog box, it's recommended to have the Liberty one or the one from Real Tune. Real Tune also makes a badass fork, and I think they're doing a group buy right now for a fork. So you can either buy it from, like I say, Liberty Gears or um, Real Tune Performance. Shout out to Aaron, so always helping us out with everything. So, this is or look at that. This is the one from uh, Liberty Gear. Pretty nice piece. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil here also, um, cause it's completely dry. So I'm gonna put some there. All right, so same thing. We're gonna slide it the same way as the other one. Lift it up. Just slide it in. Whenever this side to go in, there you go. Oh, there you go. Let's get him tight on the hole. And then, remember, we just pull that one in like this. And you can tell that it goes like that because they match. So now, we just need to put our um, pan back on. And then we'll be done with this. And this is with any uh, fork that you want to replace. The OEM fork, the real tune fork, the um, Liberty. Same, same step. Hey, real quick guys, I forgot to mention. So, um, whenever you do third and four dog box and everything, um, you need to get some rings, the Liberty cells that goes in the back, goes into the, into the back of the case. Once you put this on, you put your uh, snap ring over here. And before you put um, your back plate, um, you slide those rings right here and it prevents the bearing for moving or going back and forth or actually the snap ring to come off. So make sure you get those from uh, Liberty also. Only if you're doing the whole third and fourth. If you just have the input shaft, you don't need them. But if you're doing third and fourth, first and second, then make sure you get those. So unfortunately, I don't have them with me and they're on the way. But yeah, don't forget to get those. And they just go on the back, they just slide in. Um, it's got a little groove for the uh, snap ring to slide in and then you put your back plate and then you're good to go So I just wanted to mention that for the people that are trying to do this. So don't forget All right guys, so that's it for today's video um, The the last video my, my GoPro died. So you got the idea. I just put the pin on and all But that's it. So good to go now we do have another video and show you how to put it back together and all that. Let me know if you want a video of how to do that, but pretty much same thing that I showed you taking it off, going back in. Just make sure you use the right uh, sealing on it. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, like, subscribe, uh, share the video. We see a lot of people looking at our videos, but they're not liking our videos or they're not liking or subscribing. So please do that if you like the videos. Um, so for my Spanish people, esta transmisión es para Tony, 
eh, Tony siempre nos ha ayudado, uh, o bueno, a mí, cuando necesito alguna parte o algo, él siempre me dice, si ya la tiene, me la manda, no me cobra, este, o me la trae hasta San Antonio. Entonces, lo que estamos haciendo para él es, este, pues, hacerle un tipo de sponsor, ¿no? No que yo tenga un taller, nada, pero le dije, hey, ¿sabes qué? Yo te voy a ayudar. Entonces, le estoy arreglando la transmisión, le voy a arreglar el motor, y todo va a ser sponsor uh, de mí. Él nomás me va a estar trayendo las partes, los empaques, las gears, todo esto. Yo le estoy haciendo toda la mano de obra y obviamente le estoy ayudando en lo que él necesite. Y es nomás porque pues, él ayuda mucha, a mucha gente. Él ayuda a mucha gente y este, pues ahí a vez, en, a vez en cuando se lo chingan. Pero pues así pasa, a todos nos chingan, a todos nos va bien, nos va mal. Son cosas de la vida. Entonces por eso es, es algo que le estamos ayudando al, al camarada Tony. Entonces también vayan a, a su canal. Ahí les voy a poner el link, el, el, el Henry. Este es Chef. Ni me sé el pinche nombre. Estoy barro, yo no me sé mi pinche. No sé ni lo que chingados dice ella. Pero es Chef, Chef Blog. Chef Blog .com. Creo que así se llama el canal del camarada Tony. Entonces vayan, este, háganle subscribe. Uh, porque va, va a estar poniendo videos del, del ACR que estamos haciendo. Que es el que trae, pues, el, el este. El motor este, la transmisión y todo el, todo el cotorreo. Um, ah, ya le cambió el nombre al pinche canal el güey, se llama 40 Roll. Pero bueno, este es el camarada Tony. So, por favor, si les gusta el video, háganle like, subscribe. Si quieren más videos en español o, o que, les, que les explique un poquito más en español, también díganme, también lo podemos hacer. Este, pero por favor, pues ahí hagan un like, uh, suscríbanse al canal. Enseñenselos a la raza y ahí si necesitan algún video o si necesitan algo que ustedes no saben cómo hacer, que, yo se los, que quieren que yo se los haga, déjenme saber y a lo mejor les puedo ayudar, les puedo hacer un video o trato, trato de cómo explicarles. So, until next time, hope you like the video. Peace.